Ladies and gents, we have a live one. And this will be a little lesson in sales and how I handle a certain situation. So a customer came in, wanted to see a Traverse, has a Toyota lease coming due. He's telling this to the receptionist. Receptionist says, I need an available salesperson. I was already on my way. Walk up, introduce myself, I'm David. Uh, he tells me who he is, tells me the story sort of again. Wants to get a Traverse um, or look at a Traverse, price it up, a lease, a buy. What I notice is the guy's talking like a thousand miles a minute. He's like, he's shot out of a cannon. He's moving real fast and he's breathing kind of heavy. So in my mind, I'm thinking this guy's a little nervous. It's that typical thing. Like when you walk into a dealer, you're on edge, your gloves are up. You're a little nervous about what experience you're going to have. So my, my thought process here is do whatever the customer wants. So he wants to look at a traverse. Let's bring him outside. Let's show him a traverse. And we do that. We go outside. I start talking about options and packages. He starts cutting me off. He's sort of breathing heavy and same thing. He's like, I just want to know the numbers and this and that. Maybe you could email me because I got, I got an appointment to go to. So the guy is in a rush. He has to go. So I said, sure, let's go back inside. Let me just get some particulars. This way I can price some stuff up. I'll email it right to you. All the information you want, I'm going to get to you, right? So we go inside. I do just that. I go back outside. I walk out to his car to take a picture of his VIN number. Uh, this way I can do like a, a estimate of a trade, right? Because we're not taking the time right now to do a full appraisal, but I can get an idea of what his trade might be worth. And uh, at that point, he's like, yeah, I just want the information. Like, And then he said it. He took a breath and he said, I just hate buying cars. I hate going through this experience. So my initial thought of this guy being nervous and anxious was correct. And basically in this situation, all I can do is give him everything he possibly wants in the way he wants it to make it as easy as possible for him. Because if I fight him and I go through the process of the car buying experience and I sit him down and I get his information and his email and I put him in the system and they, I drag that out in a sense to, to, to get everything I can get to him the way I wanted to do it to possibly sell a car, all I'm gonna do is turn the guy off and he's never gonna come back. But if he leaves, now he takes a breath, now within 20 minutes, a half hour, he gets all the information he requested, I'm literally doing the opposite of probably what every other dealership would do. And in turn, I think I'll end up earning his business. So let's get to work. All right, we're not using the tree. I got the Traverse quoted and the email sent out. And my goal with that was speed. Let this guy get these emails as fast as possible so he knows I'm working for him. And again, I'm gonna do the things that he wants when he wants them. This is the Traverse that we used to quote. It is a 3LT. You can tell by the wheels, it does have a premium package because it's the 20 inch wheels. That also gives you both stereo, it gives you in-dash navigation. Uh, this particular one also has the dual scape sunroof. So it's a pretty much a fully equipped 3LT. MSRP is like 49,000 and change. Uh, we are selling at MSRP. So that's what those quotes were, uh, were configured at. And I also mentioned in the email that we have other traverses. Uh, so if he didn't want to go with 3LT premium, you can save $5,000, still get leather and go into a, just a base 3LT. So I can always adjust the quote depending on what exactly he wants. Uh, fortunate for us right now, we do have about, I think seven traverses here on the lot. So I have a couple to choose from. Now, although I'm going against like the normal sales process in this situation, in my opinion, this is the way to do this. This is the way to handle someone who's nervous or who's anxious, who really hates the car buying experience. Make it as easy for them as possible, you know, and hopefully that earns their business. So we'll see. Uh, I did look in the computer. This gentleman was here twice in the past and did not buy a car, um, but maybe it was the experience, you know, so we'll see. I'll keep you posted and hopefully we put a deal together on a traverse. I'm also working a deal on a Silverado, uh, one of our loaner cars, our service loaners that is now being sold as a used car. So I'm gonna go take a quick look at it. Uh, we did a lease last month, end of the year lease. I'm having Sal right now recalculate that lease for me with uh, today's uh, or this month's programs. And the gentleman should be here a little bit later today to take a look at it and see what he thinks. This is the truck here. It's a 2022 Silverado Crew Cab. It's a 2FL model. As you can see, it's got the new front end. So it is a redesigned, uh, redesigned 2022. And it also has the brand new interior, which everybody, uh, everybody loves, you know, so far. Everyone that we're showing this new interior, they really like it. They like the screen, they like the layout. It's, uh, it's doing very well. This also has the uh, 40, 20, 40 bench type setup. So you have a whole storage unit here with, uh, you know, an armrest and then this whole thing lifts up to expose the extra seat and then of course you have storage here which is lockable with your ignition key plenty of room here in the back seat for your uh co-workers or family whatever it may be 
excellent amount of leg room stadium style seats so you can leave the seat up you have a tremendous amount of cargo space here if you want to put like suitcases or boxes or things you may want to carry around that you don't want to put in the bed uh, in a case like this this has a bed liner but it does not have a tonneau cover and as you can see here when it rains out they kind of get flooded up because the uh the plastic bed liners don't have the drain holes in them so once you start to drive all the water will flow out uh, however, if you get the spray and liner, uh, they'll clear all the drain holes that are up in the front so the water can, uh, can escape out. Ooh, boy. Pickup truck we just looked at outside. If the gentleman did it last month, the way we had the lease configured, $5.92 a month. This year, new programs, new month, same exact structure, six forty-seven. dollars So we are um, about $50 a month more now than we were last month. And that's, uh, that's normally what happens. If you don't buy in December, you know, you're going to go to January, you end up paying a little bit more because there's always a couple of rebates that don't come back. The big one, I think this year was probably Costco was the number one. Uh, incentive that we know it does not come back in January. I now have two, actually including this gentleman, three customers that I'm giving higher quotes now because they don't qualify for that Costco rebate in January. Because they don't have the Costco rebate in January. Sun's out, shades go on. I just got done speaking to a woman who just kind of popped in looking at a Tahoe. Uh, has an infinity truck going back it's negative equity she owes some money to get out of it because of over mileage i guess on a lease extension wanted to come in and look at a tahoe the only two tahoes we have available are these two they're both ls models very basic compared to her infinity and it's like 9.95 a month on lease the way she structured the lease which is about 200 a month more than what she's paying on the infinity so definitely not an easy sale. However, the Infinity is much more expensive as well. So, you know, the, the tough thing that people are coming into when their leases come due, which we've been dealing with this for a little over a year now, uh, more so recently because of interest rates climbing as they have been for the last six, seven months, leasing is more expensive than we've all been used to in the past. In most cases, 100 or $200 a month on a lease is like a five to $7,000 discount on a car. Now we're at MSRP on our vehicles. In this case, they were discounting a little bit. We don't have $5,000 worth of markup in a Tahoe LS. So it's not like the dealership's holding all the money and not doing what's right for a customer and trying to get them the best deal. It's just not feasible. There's just not that much markup in the truck. Just when I thought it was gonna be one of those days where I just spin my wheels, you know, and not write deals, I, uh, I wrote a deal. So we took a phone up on a 2020 Chevrolet Traverse. It actually was this one here that is set in steel. When the customer showed up, we also took a look at this black one and they decided to purchase this. So uh, they're gonna get their funds together, do what they gotta do and pick it up on Monday afternoon. Now I wanna take a quick minute to kinda of tell you how my 2022 ended. So if you watched like my last two videos or whichever videos it was, I talked about the fact that I needed uh, four more vehicles to hit my top tier bonus. We ended up doing the one Suburban that, that day in that video. So I needed three more before the end of the month. I had like three days to do it. We got the job done, we actually did it. So thank you very much to Anthony and our parts department because he referred a friend of his who came down and bought this beautiful, brand new 2023 Blazer RS. Also back in that last video, we were working a deal, a two car deal, father and daughter on both a Mazda CX-5 and a Malibu. And the Malibu was parked right here, not anymore, because right now in that video, it is ready for delivery and is getting picked up. We did in fact sell the door to the Malibu. Still talking with the father. He doesn't know really about the CX-5, maybe a new Equinox, maybe used Equinox. We're still figuring out exactly what he may want to do. That'll probably end up being a deal a little bit down the road. And then on the last possible day that I could sell a car for, uh, for 2022, we had a previous customer that bought three cars, uh, three cars total from the dealership. The last two cars from me, the prior one was a different salesperson that's no longer here. Uh, they came back in, they traded in their Chevy Cruze for a brand new Malibu, which we spotted and delivered. So we hit our 18th car, super happy with last month. Uh, you know, everything worked out exactly how I would want it to work out at the end of the year, it was great. And now with this Traverse here, we're starting off 2023. Uh, today is actually Friday the 6th, which technically I was off Wednesday, I worked yesterday. So this is technically my second day at work in the new year. This month I have six factory orders that should show up. I have a Colorado, a Corvette, which will be here tomorrow, and four bolts, Chevy bolts that'll be coming in. And we just sold this. So for right now, we can kind of count that I have seven sold for the month of January in 2023.
Let me just show you real quick. You know, you can see the light that's on my face from the sun. This is some of the things you go through when you're doing videos on YouTube. You want to make sure the lighting is correct and things like that. I started filming and I had like this weird angle of light across my face. So I used the uh, paper floor mat here to block and diffuse the sunlight. And I think it worked out pretty well. 